In this video, I'm going to cover problems 17 through 28 on the Chapter 2 exam review. Now, in these 12 problems, basically we're just going to write the slope-intercept form of the equation that's given to us. The first four problems, it will be just an equation in some other form, or not even in necessarily any form. We're just going to solve for y and put it in y equals mx plus b. So if you see on number 17, we have negative 3 equals 2x minus y. Well, if we want to put it in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, we need to get this negative y over here on the other side, so we can add y to both sides. We also want to get rid of this 3, so we'll add 3 to both sides. So we'll have y equals 2x plus 3. And since y doesn't have any coefficient here, we don't need to divide by anything. So that is just our answer right there. We can also go about thinking about these problems as here's our equation and here's our equal sign. So everything can kind of bounce around the equal sign. And if you're going to take a term like negative y and move him to the other side, you just have to change the sign. So instead of being a negative y over here, he's positive y over here. Likewise, instead of this negative 3 on the left side, let's move him on the right side and he'll change his sign from negative to positive 3. So if you recall from a conversation we had in class, you can move terms from one side of the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign simply by changing their sign. So number 17 is y equals 2x plus 3. In number 18, we're going to try to put it in y equals mx plus b form again. This y over here is almost by itself. Let's get this positive 10, put him over here. So if you want to think about it this way, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. Or if you just like to think about it as taking this positive 10 and moving him over here, he's now a negative 10. So anyway, we'll have 5y equals negative x minus 10. And we almost have y by itself. We just need to finish it off by dividing every single term by 5. So those 5's cancel. And y equals, and we've got to be careful here because there's really a 1 right here. So the coefficient of my x, or my slope, is going to be negative 1 fifth x. And then a negative 10 divided by 5 will be a minus 2. So for number 18, in slope-intercept form, we have y equals negative one-fifth x minus two. In number 19, looks like we have some fractions here, but don't let those freak you out. This can be the same kind of business as we've been doing. Let's get this y, put him over there, so we could add one-seventh y, or we could just move him to the other side, and he just becomes positive one-seventh y equals negative x plus four-sevenths. So we have this one-seventh y out here, so Typically what we do is divide everything by this coefficient, so divide every term by 1 7th. But when you divide by a fraction, really aren't you just multiplying? So let's multiply both sides by 7. Over here that's nice because it'll cancel that stuff out and just gives us y all by itself. On this side we'll have to distribute the 7 through, so it'll be negative 7x. And then on this other one, these 7's will cancel, so it'll be just plus 4. So even though that had some fraction stuff in there, it still wasn't that big of a deal. So number 19 in slope-intercept form is y equals negative 7x plus 4. In number 20, we're given 10x equals 3y plus 15. So we could tackle this a couple of different ways. Uh, we could take this 3y over here make it negative 3y. This 10x over here make it negative 10x. And then we could divide everything by the negative 3. That would be one way to do it. But let's look at it a different way. Let's just put this positive 15 over here. So we have 10x, and then when this positive 15 gets moved, it'll be negative 15 equals 3y. I know it looks like we have this backwards. It's no longer y equals mx plus b. It's kind of mx plus b equals y. But let's go ahead and tackle this. We'll divide every term by 3. So we get 10 thirds x minus 5 equals y. But can't we just use the symmetric property of equality that says this stuff on this side and this stuff on this side can just be switched. So we'll have y equals 10 third x minus 5. So for number 20 in slope-intercept form we have y equals 10 thirds x minus 5. 
Okay, in problems 21 through 24, we're told to write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line through the given point with the given slope. So we're given a point and we're given the slope. The slope is nice because that's just going to be m. But the point right here, uh, I mean, it helps us, but it doesn't give us the information directly. Because in order to put something in the slope-intercept form, it needs to be y equals mx plus b. So we have the m, but we don't have the b. So we need to go search for it. So I can set up my equation, y equals mx plus b. And I can put all the pieces of information that I know into this equation. Because if it goes through this point, isn't this an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate? So I could use it for the x value and the y value. And the slope, of course, is m. So y equals, well, that could be our negative 3, equals m, which is negative 8 fifths, times x, which is 5, plus b. And b is what we're searching for. Now right here on this multiplication, we can just put that over 1. That way we can have a fraction times a fraction. Looks like these 5's can cancel out in, in what we call cross-canceling, where we can take anything from the top and the bottom and factor out some stuff. So it looks like all this stuff just becomes 1. So I have negative 3 equals negative 8 plus b. So plus 8 plus 8, those guys go away b equals the negative 3 plus 8, which is 5. So, there's my value of b. So if I have my m and I have my b, I can write my equation. So y equals negative 8 fifths x plus 5. So that will be the slope-intercept form for number 21. y equals negative 8 fifths x plus 5. In number 22, uh, once again, I'm given a point and a slope, so the slope will be m, and my point, I can say, are my x and y values. But I notice immediately that this slope is undefined. Since my slope is undefined, I know that's going to be a vertical line. And since it's a vertical line, I know that all vertical lines are x equals the x-intercept, or the x-value, or whatever the x is. So, I can grab the x from here, and x is 4, so my equation will be x equals 4, just like that. So, number 22 is quick and easy. It's a vertical line. Its slope is undefined, so we know it's going to be x equals the x-intercept. We grab the x value, and it's x equals 4. In number 23, we're given another point, which we can call x and y values, and then we're given our slope, which can be our m. And we're going to put it in y equals mx plus b form. So we can just substitute all the pieces of information that we know into here, looking for the missing part, and then write our equation. So our y is going to be 4, m was a negative 1, our x was a negative 2, and then plus b. And b is what we're looking for. So when we go ahead and do this multiplication, it'll be 4 equals 2 plus b. So we can subtract 2 from both sides. Those go away. So it should be 2 equals b, or we could say b equals 2. Well, we have the slope, and we have the y-intercept, so let's go ahead and write our equation. So we could say y equals negative 1 x plus 2, because our slope is negative 1. But we see this negative 1. We don't really want to write that 1, because the negative x means negative 1x. So we're going to say negative x plus 2. And that is the answer in slope-intercept form for number 23. y equals negative x plus 2. In number 24, again we're given a point and a slope, so we can call this x and y, and this thing's m. And again I notice very quickly that my slope is 0, so that's a special kind of line. All lines whose slopes are 0 are horizontal. So I know this is going to be a horizontal line. Knowing that, that it's a horizontal line, I know the equation for all horizontal lines is y equals the y-intercept, or the y-value, which in this case is negative 5. So this horizontal line will be y equals negative 5. So on number 24, we knew the slope was 0, which is a horizontal line. 
So 24 is y equals negative 5. In problems 25 through 28, instead of given a point and a slope, we're just given two points. So if we're going to write these equations in slope-intercept form in y equals mx plus b, we have to know both the slope and the y-intercept, neither of which are given to us. So we have to first go and hunt and find out the slope, and then use that slope and one of these points to then find the y-intercept. Okay, so my slope formula tells me y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, because it's a change in y's over the change in x's. So I'll say negative 5 minus 4 and 0 minus 4. Okay, so negative 5 minus 4 is a negative 9. 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. And when I reduce that, it looks like my slope will be 9 fourths. Okay, well I can use that 9 fourths business and one of these points to help me out. So y equals mx plus b. So let's just use this 4, 4 point. I know this one has a 0, but let's do a little more math. So 4, 4. That means x is 4, y is 4. So 4 equals the slope, which is 9 fourths, times 4 plus b. Looks like these 4s cancel out, so I just have 4 equals 9 plus b. Well, I can subtract 9 from both sides and get negative 5 equals b. So now that I have my slope, and now that I have my y-intercept, I can go ahead and write this equation. So y equals 9 fourths x, and since it's negative 5, I'll put minus 5. So number 25, we were given two points, and the equation of a line that goes through those two points in slope-intercept form is y equals 9 fourths x minus 5. In number 26, I'm given two more points here. So as we did previously, we need to find the slope first and then find the y-intercept. So the slope is given as, what, negative 3 minus 4, y2 minus y1, over negative 5 minus negative 5. So negative 5 minus negative 5. So this will be a negative 7 over, and then those become an addition problem. Ooh, actually that becomes 0, doesn't it? Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So what does that say about our slope? If zero is on bottom, then our slope is going to be undefined. And immediately we know if our slope is undefined, it's going to be a vertical line. So I'll put vertical right there. Its equation will be x equals the x-intercept, or in our case, the x-value. And what is the x-value we can use? Well, I notice the x-values on both of these problems are negative 5. So that is the x value that we use. So x equals negative 5. So number 26, we were given two points. We noticed that the two points were right on top of each other as far as up and down. They're going to form a vertical line. The slope is undefined. And the equation will be x equals negative 5. In number 27, again, I have a couple more points. So if we're going to write this in slope-intercept form, I need the slope and the y-intercept. And the slope is what we'll hunt for first, so m equals, so y2 minus y1 is negative 3 minus a negative 3 over negative 2 minus 4. And that'll become an addition problem, so 0 over negative 6. Ooh, it's going to be 0 for our slope. So if our slope is 0, what kind of line is that? Well, I know immediately that's going to be a horizontal line, so I don't need to do any more with this problem. I can just use the knowledge I know about horizontal lines. Uh, their equations are y equals the y-intercept, and the y-intercept that we'll use, oh, look at those y values, both negative 3. So y equals negative 3. So number 27, we were given two points. We found that those two points uh, created a horizontal line. So all horizontal lines have an equation of y equals the y value, and we just grab that y value. So y equals negative 3. And number 28 is the final problem in this video. So we're given two more points. Uh, the first thing we want to do is find the slope. So negative 1 minus 5 over 2 minus a negative 1. So the negative 1 minus 5 will be negative 6 over, and then swoosh, swoosh, so 2 plus 1 is 3. 
So when I reduce this, negative 6 over 3 should be negative 2 for my slope. So once I know that, y equals mx plus b, and then let's use this second point. So we have an x value and a y value. My y value is negative 1. My m value is negative 2. My x value is positive 2. And this plus b is what we're solving for, because we need to find the y-intercept along with our slope. So this will be negative 1 equals negative 4 plus b. I can add 4 to both sides. So b ends up being 3. So that's really nice. Once I have my slope and my y-intercept, I can write this equation as negative 2x plus 3. So, number 28 is the final problem of this set, and it goes through these two points, and the slope is negative 2, the y-intercept is 3, and it forms the equation y equals negative 2x plus 3.